Hey everybody, this is Brett again with Work Smart Play Hard. Today I want to show you a couple things about WordPress in regards to the files and the file structure and where to find some simple things if you need to ever troubleshoot it. Um, these are things you can usually do yourself and you don't need a developer. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, if you're inside of your cPanel, the first thing you want to do is go to files and then go to file manager. And then you see a structure here of some files here. Some of these you need to know, some of you don't. The one thing to remember about any type of website is you want to store everything in the root or in public underscore HTML. So we're going to go ahead and click public underscore HTML. And then what you should see here is the three basic folders for WordPress, WP admin, content, includes. You also have 18 files, which will be installed every time you install WordPress, which also includes your 404 file. Your 404 file is, for instance, if someone goes to a page of yours that doesn't exist, it pops up with that message. Some people like to delete it. Some people leave it in there. I choose to leave it in there because I want to. I want people to know that they went to the wrong spot. All right. The first thing I think most basic people should have a basic knowledge of is what's in the WP content folder. Inside the WP content folder, you're going to find the plugin folder, themes folder, and uploads. Um, you also have MU plugins, which we could talk about in a later video and languages. But for today, we're just going to concentrate on these bottom three here. So if you click the plugin folder, that's where all your plugins are located. You've got the Akismet and Limit Login Attempts. Um, some really good WordPress sites may have five to ten plugins in here. Some you see 20 to 25 plugins. Um, the one thing to remember about plugins is they will slow down your server. So try to limit the number of plugins that you use whenever you um, build yourself a WordPress site. If you have a lot of plugins, you may have to get a virtual private server or a business hosting account. So just kind of go ahead and keep that in mind. Now, um, go ahead and go to the left side and click public underscore HTML and then click the WP content folder again. Right below the plugin folder is a themes folder. This is where all your active themes will be installed. Right now we have the 2020, 2017, and 2019 theme. Okay, WordPress by default will install those themes in there. Um, again, just a little bit of clarity here. Some people like to delete those themes and just have their one theme in there. I always leave one of these basic themes in here for troubleshooting because we know these themes are compatible. So if you have, have a troubleshooting error, it's going to work out a lot better if you leave at least one theme in there so we can test it and see if it's a theme issue, plugin issue, or so on and so forth. Go back to the left side there and click public underscore HTML and click WP content folder one more time. Inside of your upload folders is all of the images that you uploaded. Now, so far we haven't, I haven't really built anything yet. This is just a basic install. So if you click the 2020 folder, it will show July as the month. You click that and that's where you view all of, all of your images. Right now I don't have anything in there, but your images would show up there. So if you need to download an image or something like that, this is where you go ahead and do that. Now go back to the public underscore HTML. I also want to show you how to check your WordPress version. You will get developers that will say, hey, what version of WordPress are you on? And you look at your dashboard, it says, well, I'm on version 5.4.2. Well, in most cases, that's correct. But I've found in the past, sometimes that, that would be misleading. Every time WordPress updates, it updates your version file. So to find your version file, go to WP Includes. All right, scroll down to version dot php there it is it's right at the bottom okay go ahead and right click it and just click view and then if you scroll down here yep we're on the current version version 5.4.2 the database version sometimes that's important because you may get an error that you need to update your database that's 47018 and then the required php version for this to work is 5.6.2 the required MySQL version is 5.0. All right, those are all things that a developer might ask you if you have a problem with your site because they need to know because it could very well be something in regards to that your version of WordPress is out of date and you know that may need to be changed. The other thing I want to show you is a WP config file. So that's WP under, I'm sorry, WP hyphen config.php. Go ahead and click that file and then right click it and click view. Now on this one is where you find all your database settings. For instance, on this line it says database name, it's right there. 
database username, your password. Now, never do a password like that, guys. I just did that for demonstration purposes. You want your password to be um, as hard and as difficult as it is for someone to guess it, all right? Now, as far as database host on cPanel, you basically database host would be a local host. Sometimes people like to mask that. Sometimes people like to make it a little bit tougher or maybe do a third-party server. If that's the case, then that may change right there. Now, some other things on this is if you need to go ahead and check your table prefix, that's also listed in your WP config file, that table prefix should match what's in the database itself. Now, the final thing about this and like the true gem of this for me is just the debugging mode. So if you have a WordPress error and it's not working and the site's not working, you're not getting any type of custom error, you're just getting a white page. If you can get into the file manager and come to WP config file, go ahead and go to where it says define WordPress underscore debug and change that from false to true. If you change that to true, then what will happen is rather than get that white page in WordPress, you will go ahead and get a system of errors that will pop up after your server refreshes. That way you can tell if it's a plugin error, a theme error, a version error, and that will help your developer fix the site. Now, in most cases, guys, you wanna be really careful. Don't go ahead and change anything in any of these files unless you consulted with a WordPress developer because you can really mess something up. So hopefully this was a pretty good tutorial for you. I try to keep it basic for you. If you like what I said and you like my channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. I'll have more videos here on WordPress and some other aspects of hosting. Thank you very much.